Hey there friends and enemies, Jopi here again and today I need to talk about one of my favorite new playstyles in Remnant 2 thanks to the most recent patch which buffed two underwhelming mods that are now insanely fun and basically make it so you will never have to primary fire your weapon if you don't want to. These mods are the Skewer 2.0 as well as the Astral Burst. Now, I built this two different ways, one of which is a much safer playstyle where you're essentially just spamming your Archon archetype skill with the mods, and the second one making it so you have a second ability, a second skill that you will use that'll make it much riskier, but provide you with a ton of extra damage. So as far as the archetypes, obviously I'm using the Archon as a prime archetype. This allows me to generate a ton of mod power so I can swap back and forth between the weapons, just use a mod, swap it, use the mod, swap it, use the mod, and I never really have to think about it. That is enhanced with the Chaos Gate skill, which allows you to do additional damage, but you also take more damage. So that's a little bit of the risk. And then also while you have stacks, grants additional mod generation, so you can spam those mods even more if you are struggling even at all, but it's not really necessary. As far as the secondary archetype, you have two options that I favor. First off is the Warden. This allows you to put the drone shield on and never really have to think about it. You just constantly generate that shield because you're going to be healing a lot with this build, but on the Apocalypse difficulty content, sometimes survivability is paramount, especially if you are playing co-op and taking a lot of damage. The other option is also going to be something that you're going to take significantly more damage, but output damage at a much higher pace, and that is using the Ritualist with Death Wish. This will negate all healing, self-inflict damage per second, increase all damage by 50%, and grants 10% base damage as lifesteal. So you're going to do that extra 50% damage, which is significant, but again, between Chaos Gate and Death Wish, you're going to take a ton of damage. Now, you will get Death Wish pretty much on cooldown so you will have this up all the time and generate that lifesteal so as long as you're outputting enough damage you just don't have any overshield or really damage resistance with this build in comparison to having that shield and that's really the major difference i'm rocking the bruiser set just because i wanted to throw it on you can throw in whatever set you feel comfortable with depending on what kind of dodge you want i also have tranquil heart although profane heart again i see profane heart in a lot of different builds that's why i try to run on tranquil heart instead just to mix it up i'm running the spark fire shotgun this is just a great overall weapon you can swamp this out, though, because honestly, you don't really use it all that often. Skewer 2.0 says, fires a wretched spear, which embeds itself on contact spears, deal 1,040.3 damage on hit, rapidly dividing inside a, a target until bursting, dealing more damage to all targets within uh, 4.35 meters. Spears embedded in the environment remain in place for four for 11.5 seconds. Combine this with Spell Weaver so you get that uh, increase to the mod damage and mod generation when activating a skill, which is going to be your Chaos Gate, as well as the uh, activating the we weapons mod reduces skill cooldown by 1% for every 100 mod power spent. This is really essential for the Chaos Gate, but if you're running Death Wish as well, it makes it tremendously easier in order to have your death wish on cooldown then we've got the krell edge this is just whatever meta you want to use i basically wasn't using it and then you've got the uh, tech 22 or whatever handgun of your choice and then astral burst so fires a short burst of seven star fragments which deal 364.112 damage each fragments bounce off walls up to three times dealing 10 percent additional damage per bounce weak spot hits deal reduced damage this is important and i'll explain why in a second using this mod uh feedback using this mods uh this weapons mod generates 20 percent of single charge value as passive mod power and then mod damage generates 15 percent of base damage dealt as mod power so that's what allows you to essentially spam this at all times then we've got the reaction chain increases mod damage by 20 percent activating a mod generates 50 percent of mod power spent to the stowed weapons mod so essentially you're just back and forth spamming them which is insane and then you've got burning the gambler don't need to worry about weak spots with either of my mods. And so I'll increase my crit chance and crit damage by 15%. Uh, increase the crit damage by 20% with the probability cord. We got burden of the followers so that I increase my mod power generation as well. Reduce fire rate because I'm not using my weapon. And then you can run something like braided thorns. Basically focusing on 
crit chance and then crit damage as well overall i am spamming these mods to a degree that i never thought possible and it's actually hilarious to watch the traits that i'm rocking are fortify regrowth gifted vigor spirit expertise barksman leech and then you can run either siphoner or amplitude so it just depends on what you want to do if you want a bit more aoe on some of your skills or your mods which is nice then as far as the playstyle goes so it's really going to depend on which of these builds you are rocking in my opinion because you are either going to be just standing there tanking a lot of the damage with the warden as your secondary archetype and so you can output more damage consistently because you're essentially just using mod using mod using mod you don't really have to think about using your death witch skill you don't have to think about dodging really all that often because you can tank so much of the damage and it's just a nice little uh rotation there where you're just going back and forth from one mod to the other whereas if you use death wish you do have to play it quite a bit safer now another thing to keep in mind if you're playing co-op i highly recommend kinship because i ran into other players using this build and you can essentially get one shot by something like astral burst if you're not careful it is extremely powerful and kind of crazy so definitely something to keep in mind you could definitely swap off of something like uh expertise or something like that for the kinship trait if that would help you out even more just for that survivability to be honest as far as some other things to note with this build it is effective on a lot of different bosses which is nice and the range for the astral burst is interesting because if you are using it against a very large target then you can spam it from farther away if you are against a close target or a smaller target you have to be much closer because of them moving around and all of the different fragments going off in different directions so you might not hit all of them and do as much damage now talking about fragments really quick i know not everyone has maxed out prisms or anything of that nature but some things that you want to kind of focus on uh, mod critical chance is very nice mod damage is also very nice skill cooldown is another good idea maybe even damage redu reduction or something like that if you need survivability uh but those are going to be the primary ones that you kind of want to focus on you don't need anything like moderation or anything like that because you're essentially just using them and moving on to the next one so those are the ones that you kind of want to focus on and yeah overall i definitely recommend trying this out i wanted to showcase this in uh different types of situations it's good at ad clear it's good against aberrations it's good against bosses and it's good whether you are playing in solo or co-op gameplay and that's one of the things as somebody who does like to change it up a lot sometimes i just feel like playing by myself other times i want to run with other players this is a build that can do basically everything clear any of the content and every time i ran it in co-op i was towards the top end of the damage by a good chunk i, I was pretty much first by quite a bit as i was doing all this damage and with even with the warden as my secondary i was leading in damage quite a bit and i feel like just because of the rotation that you're able to do and not really have to worry about dodging or uh using your other perk or staying alive that survivability makes a big difference when it comes to just focusing on raw damage output so anyway let me know what you guys think in the comments down below my name is jopa i hope you enjoyed the video if you did like comment subscribe as always have a good one and i'll catch you all later